I've never seen anything like it before, and to attempt to hit the ball out of there is pure madness. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Cameron Smith. This is the one that I've always wanted to win since I was a little kid. So it just feels pretty amazing to be able to get it done today. Uh, it's amazing that it's my destiny to be the first Aussie to win. Just incredible. Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Playing From The Tips. I'm your host, Jimmy Emanuel, guiding you through this preview and tipping show presented by Golf Australia magazine with the sometimes insightful and at the very least interesting assistance of some of our so-called experts. This week, we're traveling all over the United States and up and down the east coast of Australia as we take a look at Live Golf's Masters tune-up, the last chance for an Augusta invite on the PGA Tour, the PGA Tour of Australasia season finale, Augusta National Women's Amateur, Australian Women's Classic, plus the LPGA goes to Hollywood. Helping me do so are two informed tipsters and passionate previewers. First up is perhaps Australia's newest meat thermometer owner and ardent crosswalk defender, Adrian Logue. Logue, anything catch your eye in the world of golf last week? And did you get a thermometer? I did. I've got a high-quality meat thermometer now. So did you cook any meat with it yet? Not yet, no. Oh, it's like a kid at Christmas. It hasn't pierced meat <laughs> yet. <laughs> and now to a man who, as a bastion of the podcast world, keeps his typos from the public's view, Rod Murray. Rod, I imagine the match play, or future lack thereof, might be your talking point uh, from last week, given it was your column and one of mine, to be fair. Yeah, look, I don't think everybody's talking about that. That's fair enough. Actually, my highlight for the week was uh, Ricky Bush used to be the uh, manager at Dunny Doo. We had him on the um, Good Good Cough podcast after it was vandalised last year. He's yep. currently unemployed. So he's going through his video library of tournaments from awesome. the late 90s and early it's 2000s great. and posting them. So I'm all in on Ricky Bush. I'll put a link in the Good show notes. A little bit like Rob Williamson with the yes. stuff that he finds and posts on both Twitter and YouTube. Well worth a look. So Ricky, not in a bad way, but I hope you don't get a job soon. I'm enjoying what you're doing with your time off. I think he was at the uh, last round of the New South Women's New South Wales Open. He for Walsh. Amy Walsh, if I'm not Correct. Oh, okay. And he volunteered at the TPS Hunter Valley as well. Yeah, he would okay. So he's okay. truly living Maybe his best life in semi resource tracker. A, he's, <laughs> he's, a, he's an interesting character is how Absolutely. I would describe him. Okay. Before we uh, jump ahead into this week, let's take a quick look back at our results from last week with five top tens, including Logue's tip of Momoka Kabori to win the Women's New South Wales Open. Went out on a limb there. Yeah, big limb there. Well, almost. Went to a playoff. Yeah, it did go to a playoff. She got the job. No, she got with, the job done. And Sarah Hammett who was right there, who I've watched play a lot of golf, is so impressive. A lot of Momoka as well. But So as a group now, we move to seven wins and 52 top tens. So we've raised the bat in the top Out ten department. Out of how many tournaments? Yeah, great question. It's, Don't know the answer to that. The percentage is not as interesting as the raw numbers might 52 suggest. 52 top tens is not bad. Logue and I are the only multiple winners. Oh, there so there you go. But my 13 top it's tens March. my thirteen top tens are probably untouchable it's already. It's March. Yeah. <laughs> Well, pull your finger out and maybe it, you know, maybe it'll matter. So first cab off the rank for this week, Logue, you are going to tell us everything we need to know about Live Golf League's Orlando event. Yes, welcome to Live Orlando, hosted at the Orange County National, which has two courses, Panther Lake and Crooked Cat. Of course. Nice. Both were a collaboration between Phil Ritson, David Harmon, and Japanese golfing legend Asao Oki. The tournament's going to be hosted at the Crooked Cat course, and- I just want to pay tribute to the uh, copy person on their website. Okay. Oh, the, gold. the Orange County National website. The, the copy there is just amazing. So here's their first up description, first line descri describing the Crooked Cat. The Crooked Cat features significant elevation changes, native heather. I'm going to drop a marker there. More on that later. <laughs> native heather <laughs> and mounding framing. The have rolling you, have fairways you gone through line by line range. and just completely destroyed this? Is that what you've done? <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Anyway, that sent – well, yeah. Look, I don't want to – just stick with me, okay? okay? So, I took that sentence. I ran it through chat GPT. Uh, it says, this sentence is a descriptive statement about a golf course called the Crooked Cat. The sentence structure is grammatically correct and effectively conveys information about the golf course's characteristics and features painting a vivid picture for the reader. So, I asked chat GPT, how would you improve that sentence? Uh, and it said, at the Crooked Cat, 
the chat GPT just excelled at this. At the Crooked Cat, golfers will encounter a challenging landscape of dramatic elevation changes where native heather and artfully designed mounding provide a stunning backdrop for the rolling fairways. The signature feature of this course is the massive multi-tiered greens. It just made that up. That require <laughs> precision and finesse to conquer. A true test of skill for even the most seasoned golfer. Uh, so very impressive from chat GPT there, but this is still not as impressive as the copywriter who goes on in the website here. The course's open feel encourages golfers to grip it and rip it off the tee. Nice. And there is certainly more room for error and multiple options for playing a hole both off the tee and into the greens. Crooked Cat is not a connect-the-dots course. Feel free to go outside the lines like a kindergartner's finger painting. <laughs> but beware. As with link style courses, there is an element of chance and a wayward shot can end up in many seemingly random placed grass bunkers. Gamblers and scramblers will do well. So will shot makers. Crooked Cat is more exposed and the routing t- twists and turns. So the wind comes at you from ever changing directions and it's a real factor. Players who appreciate the challenge of working the ball up, down, left, right to counteract or ride the wind will get a chance to showcase their mastery and get the most out of the course. It goes on. There's I'm element, sure it does. <laughs> There's an element of bush lawyer golf knowledge about it. There's some golf knowledge <laughs> required for that, but it, it, they've grabbed words and just kind of. So I don't. I take their word for all of that, except for the native heather. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna so question I've, native heather in Orlando. In Orlando, Florida. so yeah. I've googled native heather Florida. <laughs> this is an outstanding. This is an outstanding. <laughs> preview. Came up with. There's no heather native to Florida. Of course there's not. Although there is a type of shrub that's prolific in the warm climate of Florida called, I'm not going to give you the scientific name, I can't pronounce it, um, but it's also, it's known as false heather or Mexican heather or Hawaiian heather and it's a small evergreen shrub. It's actually native to Mexico, Guatemala and the Honduras. I was about to say, it sounds like it's not native to Florida it's again. Not native it's to Florida. native to those places it's named after. And it's prolific in Florida. It's it's sort of considered a noxious weed. Which and it's a weed, isn't it? I've... Um, I looked at many, many photos of Crooked Cat and couldn't find the slightest hint of Heather. So, Are we just going to gloss over Crooked Cat as a name? Yeah. Why do those two words belong together? It's probably, what, what does that mean? A uh, Crooked Cat? I don't know. <laughs> What's that? Well, it's not a join the dots golf course, right? Well, that's true. That's true. And you're trying to join the dots. Yeah. Well, maybe, yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, in trying to find a winner, I asked myself, who can hit the ball up, down, <laughs> left and right? <laughs> And I came up with live newcomer Brendan Steele. Okay. I mean, I, I assume probably all 48 of the players can hit it up, down, <laughs> left and right, but that's okay. Okay. Rod, a thought after that? Um, uh, well, wow, is about all I can say. It's, um, that is something else. Well, they, well, what are they doing with courses, Liv? I mean, honestly, this seems like a bizarre place to it, hold a, oh, a tournament. Oh, sorry. I missed out a vital fact here. The 42-acre driving range once received the best driving range in America accolade. Yeah, it's a, and yeah, I yeah, think it's a circular a, type deal. So you can practice correct. from anywhere no matter correct. the wind. Yeah, yeah. And having such a big driving range, I'm sure that was a factor in getting Liv because of the shotgun well, stuff. I'm, I'm also sure that given they're in Florida and that is PJ to a stronghold, yep. finding other venues that, aren't, Orlando in that don't start with Trump was probably a bit of a difficult wasn't it a circular yeah. driving range that led to Dave Hill putting down his club, marching over the other side and punching one of his fellow I pros? I so, yes. At a, at a, because they were, they were <laughs> eating downwind and they were hitting into where he, he yeah. was trying to eat into the wind. Muirfield Village, Jack Nicholas's place, has got an almost circular driving range so you can practice completely. Yeah, bizarre. Um, yeah, look, the problem with Liv is there's 48 players, so fairly quickly you've kind of worked through the field. <laughs> So I'm going with Bernd Wiesberger because I forgot he was playing Liv, truth be told. That's <laughs> probably oh, fair. Yeah, go go Bernd because That's it seems to be Danny Lee. I sort of forgot he was playing Liv. Who was it the week before? Charles Howell. Did he oh, win one week? Yep. We, we seem to be in that. Dean Burmester sounds like a chance, I think. You've got to imagine Arlo's voice. Saying something like that? Up. Yeah. Well, I'm going to Who go with someone that? more well credentialed. Given I'm figuring, otherwise, you're, sorry, otherwise you're picking Cam every week, aren't you? Or Dustin? Well, that's, that's what it comes down to. To be fair, neither one of them shown much no. this yeah. year, no. and you Nor would imagine it. both of those players will turn around at some point. But Brooks and Bryson, what yeah. the hell? But you on? think the guys going to Augusta have got to be the ones with something to play for, really, this week? Right. They want to tune up, and actually, the other guys are showing up for the money, which is the case most of the time. But the guys actually going to play Augusta have a point to prove. 
None probably greater than Sergio Garcia, who dropped out of the top 150 in the world rankings this week for the first time since May of 1999. Wow. Wow. That's actually quite an achievement. Oh, that is absolutely. like that is an unbelievable stretch to say inside that number. For all his faults, and there are many, he has been a good and, player for a long time. And he probably would have stayed in there if it wasn't for Yeah, and he's going to have that backup about that, number one. But number two, he knows next week at Augusta, he's going to be one of the lightning rods of everything that's happening yeah. because he's going to be in that champion's dinner. He's going to be the one to mouth off to someone under the tree there one day when he shouldn't. So he knows it's coming and he wants his, he want his golf to show up as well. And he's renowned for his love of Florida's native heather. As so, he, <laughs> has he still got it? That's the question. I, well, he Sergio. played some good golf this year. He w- finished about well, inside the top ten, I want to say, in the last one and twenty something the last time. So he's still got something. And mm. look, I I don't think if he's playing the Masters the following week, you tip him to be inside the top twenty, maybe. But here, with the lack of performance from the bigger bigger names, other guys coming up and winning, I, you know, I'd be interested to see how a uh, Danny Lee handled a head-to-head battle with Sergio Garcia. Yeah, so, just on that, is, is this a good warm-up for Augusta? No, seriously. Of course, is the, the golf course not what at you all. want to be no. playing the week before Augusta? You don't want no. to be playing San Antonio, which we'll get to soon yeah. either. Reminds me a little bit of where they used to play that um, the, the week before Augusta, where Mickelson always used to win. Southwind. Yeah, that that Southwind. Sugarloaf. No, Sugarloaf. 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 Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's big and open. Well, and I mean, the question is whether the golf course helps at all. Like, they've tried to do that. They tried to do that with the Houston Open Houston. for a long time when they played at, um, what was that place called? can't remember, but that was that had some similarities. Yeah. But the other question is, is it the warm-up you want when a lot of them don't like to necessarily play the way before a That's right. And now you're forced wonder about, to. wonder about the meetings prior to that. That would have been a nightmare, wouldn't it? I mean, Norman would have called them all together and said, what are we going to do about the majors? Do we want to play the week before or not play the week before? Do you think there would have been that much consultation? I would think so. Okay. He would have had to go to the likes of Phil, Dustin, and Cameron, surely. Yeah. I mean, I would have. Th- you would have thought so. But then they've got what to, they want. They've got to fit their schedule in around mm. the other schedules yeah, because course. they're not going up against no. major PGA Tour events, big PGA Tour events. I should say. Some of the problems that the Australian Tour has got trying to find absolutely dates trying to, to find tournament. those spots to have yeah. a, a place. Speaking yeah. of the Australian Tour. It's the end of the PGA Tour of Australasia season this week, and they go to the national tournament presented by BMW that you'll be surprised to learn has been played at the National Mm. on the Mornington Peninsula. So last event of the year, and I think in the future this will become something of a tour championship type deal for for the local tour. Not just there yet, but they played an event the last two years at the National that was on the Gunner Matter course, not quite the same event. This is a bit of a different one. The hope they would have had would have been that the three DP World Tour cards were still up for grabs by the time they got here. They're not. Not. Basically, David Michaluzzi, Tom Powerhorn, and Andrew Martin will grab those. Uh, Brendan Jones is actually in second on the Order of Merit, but he's not going to tee it up, so he's not going to get to the required four events to grab one of those cards. Oh, well, that's a big decision. I wonder what's happened there. Uh, no, his only interest in that order of merit, from what I understand, was actually the spot at the Open. Right, okay. Was going to stay in Japan the whole time, no right. real interest in going to Europe. So he wanted to win the order of merit and go to the Open, or that was it. So okay. so that let Andrew Martin in. Yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, so they're on the Muna course this week, ranked number 12 in the country, and probably the probably the absolute best work of Greg Norman and Bob Harrison together. Um and or even though it's not actually the highest ranked course on the property anymore. Uh, testing sort of a layout in June land, probably about the best fairways to hit off in the country. Mike Clayton certainly thinks so. Wind all important here to defend par against players of this sort of skill level, uh, but a very good watch. Closing three-hole stretch that should be interesting here. Uh, just over 100 in the field, but plenty of good ones there. Michaluzzi, three-time winner, could win four, which is kind of unprecedented here, and more money, which he doesn't really need at the moment, but he'd like it. Power Horan is another one who consistently has just been in the conversation. Isn't pretty much bobbed up. Working with Brad Hughes yeah. and working very effectively at being consistent up. and very impressive ball striker. Uh, interesting to watch how Cade McBride bounces back after the New South Wales Open where he had a real chance to break through that sort of level of Close Australian tour players, uh, while Rod, your man Laurie Flynn, ought to be good for a crazy low round at least <laughs> one shoot, day this week. He'll shoot 60 at some point, yeah. Uh, also interesting are the guys splitting their time between Asia and home, like Zach Murray and John Laris, who have been all over the place. They go play one week there, one week here, one week there. 
and including that in that crew this week is Scott Hind, who comes home to play one of the clubs he's a member at. So for the second time this season, after he played Nudgee, where he is a member, he's going to play the National. The National and Nudgee, it's quite the spread of courses to Mm -hmm. be. It is is quite interesting, (laughs) yes. Both multi-course facilities. Diversity and inclusion, Scott. Yeah, that's right. Uh, also, a shout out to Matt Jager, who makes a journey out of the pro shop at Cathedral Lodge, where he made an albatross with driver off the deck the other day. Nice uh, work, Matt. Yeah. So, on to some tips, and I'm going to go for Jared Felton this week. Some very steady play this season, mixed in with a little bit of bad stuff, but not not too much. Absolute flusher, and if he wins, it gives me a chance to make fun of him publicly, so I'm all on board with that. <laughs> Rodney. You better come to me next because I think you've t- you've taken some yeah, tip it, from I on the other side of the desk. I put it into the spreadsheet as well, so he clearly hadn't looked. Uh, I'm going to go with Nathan Barbieri because he's been there and thereabouts all year, yeah. and it's kind of about he's just he's been that player this season. He's had a couple yeah. of chances, hasn't quite capitalised. He's good. He's really good. He's a flusher. He's got all the tools of the modern pro. At some point, he's going to have to win something. There's no reason why it can't be this week. Absolutely. That's if Michaluzzi doesn't win. He's kind of the Jin Young Co. of 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Australasian Tour. And him on home soil might be almost unbeatable, Michelucci, particularly as confident as he is at the moment. And he was down there last week playing a few times as well and getting ready. So, like, he is pedal to the metal of he's, getting he's, ready for this. Exactly. He's really fallen into that. And this is the real trap when they get when players get to this level. There's no resting on his laurels, which is what's impressive. He's out practicing at five in the morning and seven at night. He's, yep. he's putting in the work on top of getting the results and the good play. There's no sitting back going, well, that's job done. Yeah. And a player that's doing that is a player that's going to go, you need to do that. If you want to get to the, where he wants to get to, yeah. all those guys are doing that. So. Yeah. If Nathan Barbieri wins, it'll be one more chance for people to remind him how to wear a cap as well. That's <laughs> shocking. He's never it's quite just a disgrace. The way I said that to him the other day. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Logue, now have you well, scrambled and I found someone? Jared Felton because I feel like he doesn't have the pressure of a major champion caddying for him this week. <laughs> that's true. So I, thought, I felt like he was going to bounce back. <laughs> Um, so that was my rationale for that. But I'm going with Blake Windred. That's good. Uh, he's a winner in that part of the world. Mm-hmm. Cups region, yes. Yes. And uh, Golden up and down he made on the last oh, yeah. on that tournament. Yeah, incredible. Ogilvy like at the let's yeah. open that shot that he hit. And he's uh yeah, he's coming into form, I feel. Yeah. So yeah, Blake Windred. Another one who's travelled all over the place playing challenge tour and crazy. It's just schedule. nice to have a local tour where you know a bunch of the names and you can say, Oh, he's been playing well and he's it been is. playing if you, well. If you, if we you say go, this every week about yeah, these it, TPS events. It really is nice to be back. If you go through that that list of players and you keep a semi regular eye, yep. you'd know the majority yeah. and it's not Oh, there's Peter Lonard. There's these guys have been around forever. It's it's younger guys, which is fantastic and a real again. It's actually congratulations to the that's tour. right. You can be a golf fan in Australia again. Correct. All of a sudden, it's been a while where you kind of couldn't really be a golf fan, which has been nice. And you've got that mix of older and yeah, and yeah. You've, got, you've got Matt Griffin in the field, and you know they're you know, people who've had stellar careers and come back and play and Scott Hend and yeah, yeah. Aaron Pike. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just could you make the case that leaving aside you know the highest profile and the you know, the most talented players. Australia's doing golf the best professionally at the moment in the world. It's doing it given very, the, very well. Given the turmoil everywhere else, if, if you're a true fan of the game, I think Australia is doing professional golf best at the moment of, of everywhere in the world. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It, it's sort of just going ahead and doing its thing yeah. as well. Yeah. It's because and there's, there's some genuine innovation. We're not coming up with reasons why we couldn't do these That's tournaments. Right. It's just doing the tournaments. Just do the tournaments. And and to be fair, it's it's doing it with set schedules and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. You know, Asia is on the up, but Asia's a bit, you know, not disorganised, but a bit more, oh, we're going to have an event here, we're going to have an event here. And Australia, the tour here, is doing it as well, don't forget, with tournaments run by other organisations throughout, yeah. dotted throughout the calendar, which is very impressive. Uh, we've said it before. We kick them when we feel they deserve it, but yep. we've got to, should give them a tick when we feel they deserve and that it. This has very, really been a very a big, big mention yeah, of ter- Kim Felton and yeah, Nick Dasty, absolutely. who are the two we who really drive our, that stuff. Yeah, we must get them on one of our other podcasts to talk about that. Anyway, enough about that. Speaking of golf fans in Australia, Rod, let's stay in Australia. And can you take us through the Australian Women's Classic at Bonville, one of your all-time favourite events, I think? Well, it is kind of one of my all-time favourites events because I was there when Steph Kiriakou just streeted the field as an amateur. It really was – that, that last day was quite special. She went out in, I think, 29 from yep. memory and just – Open the place up. So it was a really good tournament to be there for and be a part of. Props to Bonville for continuing to put this on. Uh, now, they're doing it partly for publicity. They want to attract it, but they're one of the most popular resort courses in 
on the eastern seaboard anyway. Most people who might have been voted number one most mm. popular Australia's right? favourite golf, golf course, yeah, according course, to Golf yeah. Australia magazine yeah. readers. It was a it was a, it was a rare thing when it opened. It was a sort of remote. You could stay on course, and it's a stunning place. The gum trees, the flooded gum trees there, and so it's a beautiful spot. And all the rest designed of it. by my old golfing mentor Ted Sterling. Ted Sterling, yeah, exactly. So look, there's a lot to to sort of like about it. Uh, it was co-sanctioned with the LET at this event that. Unfortunately, for the moment, has stopped. We'd hope that that swing say will be back next. Year. You'd hope so because I know it was popular with the players. Meg McLaren won there last year. She won't get to defend. Uh, unfortunately, we know how much she likes coming to Australia. We know how much she likes going to Coffs Harbour. And she, she wins everything up around yeah, Coffs Harbour right. when she goes up there. So at the tournament itself, it'll be a good week. Same as last week. Same field essentially as last week. It's about eighty players. Remember, we can't fill a full field of professional players on the women's side here in Australia. That doesn't mean these tournaments aren't worth having. After what we saw last week at the Women's New South Wales Open, that was one of the really good finishes last week. You had two amateurs going against Momoko Kabori, who is the standout player in this field again. She's clearly a level above mm. all the other players in that field, which is not a knock on them. It's a thing to her. But but what a finish! You had the young amateur Sarah Hammett. Yep. Eagled the 15th hole, I think, hit yep. a three-wood to eight feet and rolled the putt in to join the lead. And there was some bogeys and birdies and all sorts of stuff. I didn't end up going to a playoff. So it'll probably be a repeat of something like that this week at Bonville. So it'll be worth a look. The course is interesting. The 18th hole, of course, gets all the attention, understandably. So it is one of the great views in Australian golf to stand on the top of that hill, look down at the green with the clubhouse in the background, which has got the right look and everything. So it's a, it's a beautiful visual. I stood there behind Madeline Sagstrom, the yes. Yaku one, on the – Third round? Yeah, third round. Last hole. And she was right there or thereabouts. If she'd made three, I think she would have been either in the lead or one off going into the final round. It was a big moment. She had to wait for the green to clear. You could feel this moment building. It's like, she's going to do this. She was the best player in that field by a long way. And she's standing there leaning on the three. But it was wonderful. The anticipation while you're waiting for the green standing right behind her. She hit this horrendous flare out to the right, which <laughs> just cleared the water. I don't think she even got it up and down. She hit it in such a bad spot. It was a real letdown after what could have been a great moment. But it was... Uh, it was fantastic. So, look, I think we'll see some some interesting stuff this week. Have you got a winner for us? No, I'm a Moko Kubori. I mean, it, reality says you can't really tip anybody else, doesn't it? It's a big, uh, big course. It's like she's it not, is a big course. It is a big course. Look, it does favour. The one thing that Bonville does do is favours a player who can hit it high and carry it long because a lot of elevation change there. You're hitting into a lot of hills. A little bit of gusto like in that sense. It's a real sort of carry golf course. I don't know Momoka's ball flight, but even if it's not as high as some of the others – I still think she's got the skill set. She's a she's a magnificent fairway wood sort of player from the deck. Like is we saw Dolly Choi rip that place apart in the first round a couple of years ago. She's yeah. similar short, but just really accurate. I think she had a five wood into the first hole at Bonville. Mm. Never played that from a ball below the feet downhill lie up the hill to a pin tucked in the back left to about five feet. Might be the most impressive shot I've ever seen. I was standing there with Larry Canning, and Larry went. He looked at me. and said, "Did you see that?" It's like. Was that as good as I thought it was? Yeah. Said, yes, it was. It was unbelievable. I don't know whether Rory would have that shot. Yeah. Rory a five with the same set. The distance would change, but whether he could hit that shot, I don't know. Yeah, okay. I was also going to say Momoka, but given you've tipped her and the length was a little bit of a concern, uh, Kelsey Bennett for me, who grew up at Molly Mook Golf Club, mm. there's a few similarities there. Elevation change. And when she played very well at the Asia Paci- Women's Amateur Asia Pacific, uh, Amata Spring, despite being on a very flat bit of land in Thailand, has quite a few similarities to the way Bonville plays. Uneven lies. Yeah, a lot of that right. sort of stuff. She handled that very, very well. She's a good player. She's going to win something at some point. Yeah, she's sort of struggling to sort of get it started a little bit at the moment. That's all she needs. She needs to win or contend in one of these, you feel like, and then she'll be, ah, oh, right, I belong. Correct. Yeah. She's in that phase of her career. So. Low. It's been a big year for Amata Spring, just by the yeah. way. It has. Yeah. Anyway. Do- did we ever get a photo of that titular spring? The titular spring. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. You just Google it. You just yeah. Google it. Um, they, I'm going for a, another big hitter, Stephanie Bunky, or Bunke, as you like yep. to say. Uh, I, I think she's- Not as uh, I like to say, as it's pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to say that. <laughs> yeah, well, probably she does, given it's her name. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, she's a class player yep. and uh, you know, should be up the, better near the top of the field somewhere. Suggest. Would you say bet? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Sure. That's a silly thing to say, obviously, because the results are tell she, you. What. She can hit shots that not many yeah. other she, players in that She field. has uh, sort of immeasurable upside, to my opinion, from the ability she has versus what she's produced so far. So what, that, that's not that uncommon. What happens there, Jimmy? What's that about? Uh, with Have Steph, all the tools. With Steph particularly, I'd say it's, it's actually knowing how good she is. Uh, I think a lot of these players who've, 
developed quite a lot through this COVID period and then also where they, they when there was events back here that they couldn't necessarily get into when they were bigger, when they were LPJ events, etc. they don't realise how good they are and how much the game measures up. I think Steph now does, but about getting that confidence and ability to go and hit those shots she can when it's under the gun and in the tournament. And I've had, I had a few conversations with her about that sort of stuff and about the concept of committing to whatever a shot is and whatever the result is is the result and then you play it on from there. I think that's that's just learning professional golf and transition from top amateur to lowly ranked professional. Yeah, very tough. You go from a big fish in a tiny pond to a tiny fish in a giant pond really quickly. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it's it's about, you know, just putting it together and learning and and I mean if you look at this field this week, there's not a lot of whereas you look at the men's field at the national in this field, there's not that same mix of sort of experienced veteran versus younger players. It's much more of just a pool yeah. of younger players who are all exceptionally talented, obviously. They don't get a chance to go out to play with these other players and watch how they go about it and have those players turn around to them and say, hey, your, your game's you're really, good. really good. I've been and, and seen the best and you're good enough um, to go play with So, you know, yeah. I, I think that stands out a little bit in those TPS events, but it's kind of mm. everyone expects everyone to be good at that level, so you don't get as much feedback. So. And every single week at one of those events – two or three players put their hand up and have a great week. Correct. Yeah. And I, I think Stephanie Bunke has uh, bad nine holes every now and then. Yeah, she does. Uh, out yeah. of 72 holes, she's she just throws in a bad nine yep. somewhere. She realistically is one that needs to get a chance to play overseas somewhere and really learn her craft doing it every day, all day, rather than having to go back and work at the pro shop at Yarra Bend or doing that sort of stuff and then once into it would develop but to get from Australia, getting money and then doing yeah, that as, is a, the, as is a young the, woman with golf ability to get from Australia to the top of world golf might be the longest journey yeah, of any established golf nation it in is. the world which that is, is really where that really LET really co-sanctioning of these events is Huge. so important look at exactly Steph Kiriaku right. who turned it into an LPJ yep, tour card exactly she may right. have ended up there eventually anyway but I mean the, the counter argument is always if you're good enough you'll get there but that's a very harsh one. There's a lot of people who could get there that perhaps get lost along the way. So Correct. because your confidence to, takes a battering. You just, just to bootstrap to yourself on some of these women's tours is tough. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, there's a lot of expenses yeah. and not oh, much money Japan, on offer. Japan is – the Japan's women's tour is arguably the hardest tour to get on and stay on in the world. Yeah. And so, they – isn't there – I think, Kara Stavis, don't you have to pay an interpreter if you don't speak Japanese for your first year, to travel yeah. with you for your yeah, first right. year? So first year or two, yeah. 50 or 60,000 bucks probably How's for the year that you got to find? Anyway. No. And – Giving us another segue, we're going to stick with women's golf, and this time the amateur version at the fairly new tournament that seems to have proved powerful enough to shift the LPGA's first major of the year. I speak, of course, of the Augusta National Women's Amateur. Rounds one and two played at Champions Retreat Golf Club on Wednesday and Thursday this week. Then there's a practice day for all the players, even though only 30 of the 72 or 30 and, and ties of the 72 make the cut to play uh, Augusta National proper on the final day. So, of course, Augusta National takes needs no introduction. Um, and it's actually really good to watch these players play it. With the length of approach shots they have, it actually highlights the sort of architectural challenges that are built into the place. You know, they're going into the par fives with fairway woods or considering laying up much more than the week following at the Masters. It's becoming a treat to see the course changes previewed in this tournament. Correct. Before yeah, the men absolutely. come play the next week as well. Uh, and Champions Retreat nearby in, in Georgia gives off some sort of Augusta vibes and it's a good sort of a warm-up test for them. Uh, and this tournament so far has proven a great, you know, showing of, of what's to come in women's golf with, you know, Jennifer Cupshow now a major winner winning the first year against Maria Farsi in a fantastic display. So... Only one Aussie in the field being Justice Bozio from Queensland, who I might add is a genuine chance of going pretty close here this week. Has that was a, game, a big moment, doesn't has it? A, has a game really well suited to this. But also in the field is Malaysia's Janith Wong, who actually lives in Melbourne and has a name on the honour board so much at Metropolitan Golf Club, she might supply us Mike Clayton as the club's most famous export one day. If she wins, we will claim it. Absolutely. We? No question yeah. about that. There's... There's, she still plays under Malaysia due to yeah. citizenship stuff and all this sort of thing that realistically you would have hoped might have been sorted. Dominant player down She is a fantastic player. Pepperdine now. She now plays a golf at Pepperdine and is getting into the swing of things after hurting herself just before the Sandbell Invitational. Uh, otherwise, in the field, we've got US amateur winner Saki Barber, Lantana Stone and Ingrid Lindblad, who were both the runners-up last year, to what I've called 16-year-old swag merchant Anna Davis. 
Yeah. Who just walked in that place with a bucket hat on and just the moment she came on screen last year, like, who is this? It's just this magnetic <laughs> sort of vibe, and just yeah. walked in and just everyone went okay. So who was the youngest winner at just sixteen years of age ever in the event in the three years or so four years? Uh, all three of them are back this year. Davis has had some LPGA tour starts and other things, and showing more and more. She's something pretty special going on there. You've also got Rachel Kuhn. Mega Gane, Jensen Castle, Fiona Zhu of New Zealand is worth keeping an eye on. Really good player, played a few events down here. Um, but basically, field is stacked with talent. Like it's, it's, oh, it's, the, it's, it's the absolute it's best. It's crazy best, good. And the, Especially now that the ANA Now the moved. ANA move, Chevron Championship. Well, I'm that, worried you're going to like get my pick again because you haven't mentioned a very high profile player. Okay. But, well, I'm going to tip first then. I'm going to go with Hannah Darling of Scotland. Uh, good form, <laughs> good form playing college golf so far at USC this year. She kind of wins events for fun back in the UK, um, and she's played before. She was T27 last year. You kind of, this feels like an event where you kind of need a start, although Davis didn't and all that sort of Augusta's stuff. Augusta's a real horses for courses course, though. You see the same name. If you go through the Augusta records or through the Masters records, you yeah. just see the same names over and over and yeah. over. There's and this is, just can't this is, whereas be, the first couple of years it was kind of everyone showing up for the first time and it was a bit of fun. Mm. I think this is starting to get that stature where you show up the first time and you go, oh, okay, this is something. So, Logue, your big name that I hadn't mentioned? Uh, star of the Netflix show The Short Game. Yes. Amari Avery. Yes. Who played quite well last, last year. year. Yeah, so it was it's right not, in it last year. Yeah. It's not her first rodeo when it comes to the Masters. I think you need to uh, have played there a little bit, as we said. And uh, I think she's a class player. I, I, I was very impressed with her last year, and yep. um, I think she's going to do well this year. Rod, some yeah. thoughts? Ingrid Lindblad, Lind yep. who she led the US Women's Open, if I'm not mistaken, after the yes, first round did. last year. Yeah. In fact, yeah. and she was still right there after three rounds. So, quality player, clearly. Runner up here last year. Hits it high, hits it long, everything about the golf course. Got the game. She's got everything for it. You would think that, uh, I mean, Rose Zhang will probably be the favourite for a lot of people because she's got the most recognisable name in women's amateur golf, I would suspect. But it's going to come down to a couple of It's going to be a great event. It's basically what's going to happen. It's going to be yep. a terrific event. You're not going to see anything there that's not interesting and fun. Absolutely. Let's once again use a tenuous link to get us to our next event, which is the Valero Texas Open that offers one final chance for the not already invited winner to get their ticket to Augusta stamp for next week. Rod, what do we need to know? Greg Norman design. Cookie TPC Cutterish, San Antonio. TPC San Antonio, yeah. Cookie Cutterish. Designed with some help from Sergio Garcia, who at the time was engaged to his daughter. Yes. No. <laughs> and Sergio's name I don't think is any longer on, I would the, on the design. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what a circle they must live in. Oh, it's it's what a bubble. <laughs> it's nothing like our world, is it? It's no, just, it uh, is in no way like It is just uh, something else. Uh, look, it's your um, quintessential PGA Tour golf course with a quintessential PGA Tour field. This one's been hurt by the designated events. And coming the week before the Masters on a golf course that doesn't really set up in anything like Augusta National, so the field's not particularly strong. Uh, the 18th here always seems to produce some drama. It's actually a quite interesting par five with a creek up the left that bisects, so you've got a, a fairway on the left and a fairway on the right if you're going to lay up. Oh, so I'll be going to go. Quite hollow, that sort of deal. Oh, it's not that good. Yeah, no. <laughs> quite hollow hasn't got a fairway on the left, has it? No, no, it's just it's all fair with a creek on the left. They might grow the rough for that tournament or something. It might be fairway yeah, normally. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so you can you can lie up to the left fairway or so. There's at least something moderately interesting. You got a bunker in the middle of a green here, don't you? As well, one of the holes, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the par threes, yeah. Thing, yeah. So okay. uh, the golf course won't offer a lot. It'll be you know high level competitive golf with a bunch of good players. Um, the tournament itself and the winner getting a pair of cowboy boots. Yes, well, <laughs> two Greg. Norman. I mean, that's that, two that weeks is, in a row. That is up. Where last week we had the, oh, the I worked out it like was the not Ponds a jacket. Institute. It was like a, a like Lab a co- linen shirt, like a long long linen shirt, kind of like the staff would wear at a resort at Corral's Punta Cana with the straw hat that Matt Wallace got. And this week we get the cowboy oh, boots, it's and like I what love the staff would wear. Yeah, is that the? Huh? Yeah, it's got that sort of vibe. But then I love this week that they bring out a chair. And the boots to the trophy presentation and make them put the boots, boots on, on on the 18th green. So how like, many pairs of boots are sitting off to the side and what range of sizes think, to I don't cater think for? as many as you would think. I think they're squeezing, you know, Tim Heron's oh, foot into some- the same size shoe as Michael <laughs> Kim and they're different feet. As someone with big feet, that could be very, very, very awkward. And having it. just played 18 holes of golf, you're not exactly no, going right. to... Yeah, I'm, yeah, not a boot, continue. I'm not a boot guy either. I'd be... yeah. That's, no, you wouldn't. There's a women's tournament kids play a pair of boots too, isn't there? Cowboy boots. Remember Jin Young Co. Yes, correct. Yeah, there is. 
So where is that? Is it? That's got to be in Texas somewhere. Is it the Volunteers of America Classic? Yeah, that's it. Perhaps. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. So enough about that. The tournament itself has lots of history. This is one of those PGA Tour events where you look and go, God, it's a shame we don't do better with this tournament. Mm. It's been around since 1922. Yep. So. A lot of the great names have won it, um, Palmer, Hogan, et cetera. But interestingly, the the most interesting form winner for me would be former Commissioner Dean Beeman. Oh, yeah. Won the go. tournament in 1969. There you go. So there you go. Uh, I won't get any feel like that uh, this week, which makes you wonder how Valero might be feeling. They're stumping up $8.9 million is the purse. So the cost of the tournament, I think it's generally around two to two and a half times the purse. Yep. It's about a $20 million week for them, you would think. Uh, how many of the top ten in the world? Uh, top 50 in the world, do you reckon, are in the field? Um, I, I know Tyrrell Hatton's there, so at least one. Eight of the top 50 in the world. Oh, it? really? That's not, I mean, that's not bad. The 20 million bucks buys you eight of the world's top 50 <laughs> Decky, players. Wow. And, yeah. and none of those eight are the Spieth, McElroy, Ra. No. None, no. none of them are going to make anybody come to the golf course in that way, so. Rory played last year, and I think this is cut. So. It just shows if you gave the Australian Open $20 million, it uh, it's, wouldn't make that much percent on the, the field. It's though. the proof that yeah. the prize money doesn't yeah, no, do it at all. Right. No, not at all. I mentioned that partly to say we're getting an indication of what the future of golf is going to look like. Mm. It's also raising all those questions that the PGA Tour is going to have next year is where is the money going to come from, not just for the designated events. They might be easier to finance than these events. Yeah. Are we going to see these purses go down? I don't see. If you're running Valero, can you sit in the boardroom and say this $20 million investment is still worth what we're paying yeah. What we're paying to get it? So, look, there's some interesting stuff to, not to do with the- What do Valero do? They're an oil company. Oil company. Oh, okay. We're right. in Texas. Okay. So, so maybe, look, that, it's Maybe it's they interesting. need a nicer pair of boots to offer. <laughs> maybe a cheaper pair of boots. Maybe they get gum boots next year. <laughs> so, <laughs> save 20, save 20 bucks on the, on the trophy. Uh, so, look, I think it's all interesting that way. JJ Spawn is the defending champ. He played quite a lot of the match play last week. I like JJ Spawn. He's got that homemade golf oh, yeah. sort of swagger. And Ball he's striker. A good old fashioned yeah. golfer. It's yeah. It's like, how does he produce that with that action? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I does. like JJ Spawn. So, he won it last year. Charlie Hoffman's been a perennial contender here. What's the matter? No, let's continue. Yeah. Mm. Charlie right. Hoffman's been a perennial contender. I don't think he's uh, playing particularly well this year, but he did win it once. He, Hoffman turns up here and the Masters. You might have been Spieth, didn't he, here? Was that here or was that the other one of the other 10 Texas tournaments? Don't know. Yeah, I think you might be right. It was here. Yeah. Speed's won this and he's on this anyway. So, look, uh, probably not. Hard to find. Hideki Matsuyama's in the field. He's probably the highest ranked player. WD'd from his third round match last week against Max Homer. So, is he carrying an injury? Who knows? Has he been injured since he won the Masters? Is he just Hideki? Hideki? Yeah. He he just, just, like, he does Hideki things. There were photos of him last week testing equipment. And I reckon there was 20 of the same driver shaft stacked up. There was about 10 different driver heads. There was about 20 fairway woods. And he's just got this crew of guys who stand there handing him things. And then he was also hitting putts with tees in the ground, a training aid, and then someone putting a quarter on the oh, toe of the that. putter while he took it away. Yeah. He's just Hideki being Hideki, I would suggest. He's very mysterious. It's very tin cup, actually. We know oh, yeah. almost, we know almost nothing out. about Hideki, do we, really? No, he's a, he's a mystery by design. He really is. Like Didn't when he got a, married and no one knew. And he, he had a baby and, and no one knew. Kid, no one knew, yeah. And someone asked him about it. He was like, oh, I'll talk about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can lives, in, lives in Texas. Oh, does he? Oh, there you go. He I can't imagine he could live in Japan. No. A bit like Tendulka in India. He wouldn't be able to go no, anywhere. That right. that Masters win was the biggest thing that's ever happened in Japan. In Correct. So, well, he's here this week, we think, unless he WDs. Ricky Fowler is the other name that you might recognise. So, that'll make it interesting. Who's going to win? Who knows? Australians in the field. Cam Davis, Harrison Endicott, uh, alternates Cam Percy and Aaron Baddeley. Cam Percy very close to getting in at yeah, this stage. Yeah, he's second alternate, I think. Yeah. Aaron Baddeley, who played decent again last week, best Australian in Corral. He's having quite, the who's year. having quite the year. Mm. Mm. He's like a resurgent. Resurgent, yeah. yes. Sort of a thing. So yeah. who's going to win, Rod, with all that research? Uh, where's my tip? Let me find it down here. I can't remember. Ah, Matt Wallace. <clears throat> One last week at Corral's Mundicana. Matt Wallace is back that kind of guy. Matt back Wallace. to back. I'll tell you why. He doesn't get in the Masters for winning last week. And he will be so irked by that, he'll go out and win this week just so that he gets into the field. Oh, or never, yeah, he'll never irk Matt Wallace. He, uh, he spoke about how he's been Mr. nicer to himself last week, and that was a success. Yeah, to, no to, mention of being nicer to the say, caddy than he abused on the caddy hole the week before. But anyway. He did finish third made two up. years ago as well, which yeah. sort of helps to make the case. But he's only going to miss the cut. Very good player. Very he's a really good player. Yeah. Would have a big eye on a Ryder Cup spot. Logue, a thought? I like the... Texas Open, it was um, featured heavily in a movie I reviewed, Seven Days in Utopia. Yes. Where 
uh, the fictional golfer Luke Chisholm, after he'd spent seven days getting Christian conversion therapy, went and played in the Texas Open, made it into a playoff against the real star of that movie, who was KJ Choi, who was playing a character called TKO, who his signature thing was he had glo- boxing gloves as his wood covers, which was, I thought, sensational. And maybe, and he was like the world number one player in that fictional universe. And it made me wish there was a universe where KJ Choi was the world number one player. Absolutely. He was awesome. And since he's a double initial first name, I'm going with double initial first name JJ Spawn. Okay. To, to defend. Robert Gamez used to use a uh, boxing glove wood Who was the boxer? Hmm. The um, Esteban Toledo. Esteban Toledo. Yeah. was yeah. actually a professional boxer yeah. before. Yeah. Right? Won a couple of times on the Champions yeah. Tour. Uh, I was thinking of sticking with Thomas Dietrich, who was top 10. Tyrrell Hatton looks like he'll contend what here. What did him last week? I tipped him last week. Hatton, I was surprised. He yeah. did nothing at the match play. But I'm going to go with a feel-good story, and Cam Davis gets a second PGA Tour win and gets the last ticket to Augusta, which He's... Australians have done before. Matt Jones That's did right. it. Shell Houston Open days. Australians play well in Texas. Adam Scott's won yeah. pretty much yeah. every PGA won, Tour event. I in, think he does. I think he's got the full set yeah. of the Grand Slam. Yeah. Matt Jones used to play well there. A bunch of them all play well. So John very, Sendon used to very play Cam well. Cam Davis golf course. This, Absolutely. That's a great call. And had been playing like a dog all year. Shows up the players, gets right in the mix and sort of had a bit of a chance mm. really, but Scheffler was too far away. And then showed some good stuff last week. We, tough group, but showed some good stuff. So... All right, so last event, and why not go with one last little segue here? Because when you think Cam Davis, you think about his magnificent teeth, <laughs> and teeth are what DIO Implant, sponsor of the LPGA Tour, nice do. Done. I meant to look them up, and I forgot to, DIO, but I got distracted by this tournament, in particular this golf course. Because it's a new golf course. It's a new yeah. golf course, which, according to the club's website, is a Billy Bell George Thomas. Wow. Palos, Palos Verdes, I think it's called. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Palos Verdes. Yep. Sort of as quite private golf clubs up club up in the hills. Seen some pictures. It was redone. Apparently, lots and lots of trees taken there about ten years ago by what's his name? I've got his name here. The designer. Anyway, we'll come back to that. Nicely done. Uh, yeah, well, done. Yeah, well done. Yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Uh, so this was played at Wiltshire this golf tournament, which is one of the great reasons to watch it. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I based my pick on thinking it was still at Wilshire. But well, that's anyway. your poor research. Well, here, still, I am, here I am still George about teeth implants, and you similar don't even... style of golf course. I, I assume Palace. Uh, I uh, think there's probably a lot more elevation change. Yeah, in this one much more. It has got the barrancas. That you got to love a barranca. And this any time like barranca, it's so, great. So that's a promise. So I'm really, really, really keen. This might be. Todd Eckenrode is the name. The architect, by the way, who did the redesign. Not a redesign, renovation. Took out a lot of trees about 10 years ago. Hard to tell. There's not a lot visually of the course. It looks kind of wide open, and I just think it's going to be interesting, as the LPGA does every week. Um, great field. I think uh, seven of the top 10, world's top 10 players. The only one's missing, Minji Lee, Lexi Thompson, and Brooke Henderson. So you've got the Coes, you've got the Corda, you've got Inji Chana, Tyre, Titic, and all the rest of it. Um Strange in the field, Hannah Green, Steph Kiriaki, Grace Kim, and Sarah Kemp. Though I think Sarah Jane Smith might have got through qualifying this morning as well. Yes, I think that's so. Uh, decent Australian in the field. Australian and should Karen do well. Davidson, here. I think, is second alternative at this stage. Yeah, she did quite well at the qualifier as well. So look, uh, for mine, this could be the most interesting tournament of the week, simply because of the golf course. Yeah, yeah. You've got a great caliber of field. It's one of the great things about the LPGA going to these golf courses. You've got really, really good players. You get to see really, really good players on these golf courses that we wouldn't otherwise see. So this is one that I will definitely. Be tuning into. Interesting that Brooke Henderson doesn't show up. She was a perennial contender and winner when it was at Wilshire. And also Minji Lee, who was quite yeah. successful here and has barely played any golf this year. Yeah. She's having a really long spell, obviously, before a busy period. But it's um, interesting that she's staying at home and practicing away in Texas. I imagine she's where she is at the moment. Uh, Rod, have you got a tip for Nelly Corder. She's never a bad bet. There'll be That's quite a few good. uneven lies here and all the rest of it. She's got all the shots. Yep. You know, but it'll be the – well, not the usual. That would be underselling how interesting it is. But you'll see a slew of the usual names at the top of the leaderboard. Yep. You, if you're interested in women's golf, it's always a good good event. It'll be a good Sunday. Low? Uh, I'm going with JYK, Jin Young Co. Yep. Um, I, I was basing that main, mostly on the fact that I felt like she was probably out for a bit of Baranka revenge from – some adventures she had last year. That, at was bizarre. that was the most bizarre moment of 2022 was Jin Young. What did she make it eight or something on that hole? Yeah. She hit it in the breaker and was faffing around in there like yeah. a 20 miles. Yeah. Out. I'm encouraged to hear there's breakers in this course as well, though. I do miss this tournament going from Wilshire, which was always a joy to watch each year. Uh, this was one I always tuned in for. 
but very interested to see another Thomas course. Yeah, exactly. They, like, I feel like they're like Vermeer really... paintings. There weren't many of them no. left and preserved. Like there's only like 15 Vermeers in the world but, or something. But and I think George Thomas courses are kind of similar. The LPGA rarely takes an event away from a good golf course mm. to a worse one. No, they, they do they quite a good job good of like that. that. Some of the stuff. LPGA is doing a really good job of picking course. I mean, they've got some duds on their schedule. They always have had for all sorts Are you suggesting the course that plays inside the racetrack in Indianapolis <laughs> is an architectural gem? <laughs> It's I'm not suggesting course, that. No, yeah, I think so. It's actually quite interesting, right. I think, isn't yeah. it? The one it actually is pretty cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you probably picked the wrong one. I'm, I'm very excited by that. But one. somebody there is doing the right thing. I know we're a small subset, but there are a number of people around the world who will turn the tournament on this week to see the golf course. Absolutely. We saw the same thing last year with the um, what's the, the Founders' Cup. Yeah. They took it to the Donald Ross course that was in the middle of nowhere that nobody ever heard of. Yep. That was like, I've got to see this golf course. And it's just – and, the, of course – the upshot of that is you turn on to see the course and you see this amazing golf, you become an LPGA fan. Absolutely. Somebody there is doing it right. Yeah, absolutely. LPGA, so, and I think that'll be the case again this week. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's about time we had a Japanese winner on the LPGA Tour and I'm going with Yuka Sasso, who's playing good golf but still only has one win being a major. Nasa Hatoka is the defending champion. If yeah, well, Nasa Hatoka is like a kind of you just put her in a perennial top yeah, ten. She's, she's, she's a Michelle quarter. She's a seriously underrated player by I think people who don't pay great Very attention. So. Um, but there's been a bunch of Japanese players playing well of late, so may as well get a win. And Yuka Sasso feels like she'll go very, very close. Uh, that brings us pretty much to the end of things. Rod, thank you for your insights. Logue, same to you. Keep up to date with all these tournaments and more on our website, golfaustralia.com.au, where you'll also see our weekly TV guide, how to watch these events. You can also win $5,000 worth of Titleist gear in the win section with Australia's Greatest Holes competition. And don't forget to grab the April issue of Golf Australia with Adam Scott on the cover, all your Masters preview, and so much more. And we'll be back, speaking of the Masters, next week with our extended preview show. We're looking forward to that. Mm. Hands up if you're looking forward to the Masters. I know it's an audio format, but that's right. Just don't bother putting your hand up. I'm let just going to say that all be, hands are up anyway. said, I've got my hand up. <laughs> are we just hoping that people driving their cars down the street are putting their hands in there? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Don't put your hand up if you're driving the car. Operate the heavy machine, of course. We'll Thank see you, you at the Masters. Masters.